My name is Lloyd McKenzie. Uh, many of you have probably seen me on chat.fire.org. If you haven't seen me on chat.fire.org, you should get there because that is the best way to engage the community, to ask questions, to answer questions, to figure out what the heck's going on and who is doing what. I uh, am for HL7 uh, using HL7 tools. And. Hey there. Uh, so uh, I'm Rick Geimer. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at Lantana Consulting Group. I'm uh, part of the CDA Management Group, and I also uh, participate in Fire Infrastructure, Structure Documents Work Group, and Attachment Work Group. Uh, and uh, basically, that's it. Yeah. Nice. Well, hi there. I'm uh, Ardon Tonstra, and I work at uh, Firely as a fire consultant, uh, mostly specialized in fire profiling. And as such, I have an assignment for MetMai, which is a big national project in the Netherlands. And I'm also uh, involved with the support of our uh, tools. Uh, and I will show the implementation guide editor later on. So in 40 minutes, we are not going to get into uh, the deep hows and whys of all of the implementation guide tools because we just don't have time. But we do have exercises for you to play with at the end to explore the tools in a bit more detail. So I'm going to talk briefly about what are the inputs and outputs of producing implementation guides. We're going to walk through uh, three of the tools uh, in a bit of detail to show you what they look like. Uh, and the primary objective is to give you a sense of what is out there uh, and how it can be used. Implementation guide is a fire resource. Uh, like any other, so you can query it and subscribe to it uh, and push it up to a server in the same way you would a patient or an observation. Uh, we also have resources for profiles called structure definitions. We have a code system resource, value set resource, a resource for naming system which lets you capture uh, the notion of California driver's license or uh, New South Wales uh, practitioner identifier or, or whatever you like. And we take those along with ad hoc markup because we always need ad hoc text when we're presenting content to human users that explains things like what is the policy around uh, using certain information, what are the security rules, what is the implementation guide, who are all of the people, and uh, there's significant others that we want to thank for uh, producing this wonderful implementation guide, et cetera. Uh, and so we need that. And that together, right now, uh, with a configuration file, at least for the HL7 tool suite, uh, produces a wide variety of rendered views uh, that developers can then look at and understand what the heck is it that you're trying to ask me to do with this fire thingy. It is possible to also produce implementation guides as PDFs. Not a whole lot of people are doing that. Uh, and not a whole lot of people are doing that anymore because Fire lends itself very much to uh, interactive web-based navigation, uh, and that typically is what most software developers are looking for these days. A couple of changes that are happening to the tool suite very soon, so I'll mention them now. Uh, we used to have, or we currently still have, a configuration file that drives the HL7 implementation guide publishing process. Uh, and in addition to uh, producing uh, the HTML rendered view of content, we will also be producing a package uh, which is of computable content. Um, more importantly, it's uh, something that you can put in a package management system and can therefore have implementation guides that more easily depend on the other implementation guides. We can do that right now but you sort of have to hard code the path of where they live. We're moving to a place where you won't have to do that. You'll simply specify the URL for the implementation guide, the canonical URL, and the version of it that you're dependent on, and it'll go off and find that wherever it is uh, and make it available to you. We have a lot of resources that may show up in implementation guides. Uh, obviously, implementation guide itself. We've got capability statements which define 
what can be done or what should be done. We've got structure definitions for profiles and extensions, value sets, code systems, concept maps, uh, lots of different uh, resources. And we have tools available for some of them, not for all of them. Uh, the slides will be available and the hyperlinks you'll actually be able to click on and go somewhere. You can't really do that from here. And we didn't have the time to show them all to you, but uh, these tools exist. You could also find a list of the tools on the FIRE wiki, which you can get to from the FIRE homepage. There are additional resources that we do not yet have any tools for. So if somebody wants to go and create a tool for one of these, or for that matter, if you want to create a better tool for one of the preceding ones, you are welcome to. Uh, one of the nice things about having a standard for representing this content is that anybody who has a new idea for a better way to edit uh, or maintain this content uh, is free to do that. In terms of the markup content, it's either XHTML or Markdown, and I don't remember off the top of my head uh, which flavor of Markdown we have most recently migrated to because uh, I don't use Markdown because it doesn't let me hit F8 and validate uh, the way that the XHTML does. Uh, but that there are other people who have strong opinions the other way and we do support both. So that is the super fast intro to what kind of tools exist. I'm now going to dig into my portion of the presentation, which is the H07 Implementation Guide Publisher. It's a Java-based tool, which means that in theory and mostly in practice, it runs in any environment. I, we actually leverage the validation code uh, and some of the specification publishing code that is used in publishing the FIRE specification itself. So some of the little widgets that you see uh, when you go and look at a resource in the FIRE spec, we use that same set of code to generate widgets uh, that can show off what your profiles are doing uh, in your particular implementation guide. Uh, it is driven by uh, both the implementation guide resource and currently a JSON configuration file. We'll take a look at those in a second. And its primary purpose is to take the various artifacts that your implementation guide points to, so the terminologies and the profiles and the extensions and uh, the capability statements, et cetera, and generates uh, what we call fragments, which are little HTML snippets or sometimes PNGs or whatever happens to be useful that you can then embed in your implementation guide in whatever way you wish. So it allows a great deal of flexibility. You don't have to have your implementation guides look like HL7s. In fact, I'll show you an example of some, one, some that look quite different. Um, but it creates all of those components for you because it understands the FHIR data structures and knows how to render them. And if you have a different notion for how to render something, it's not that hard uh, to create your own little fragment generator. Uh, and we're, it's an open source project. We're happy to uh, entertain those and add those into the tool as well. Once you've got the fragments uh, and you've got uh, sort of your static web pages, we use a set of templates that say, this is how I want structure definitions to look, this is how I want value sets to look, this is how I want example instances to look, and a static um, website builder called Jekyll uh, to produce the actual specification. And you can run that either in a once-only mode or you can actually run it in a continuous mode where as you're editing files uh, between three and five seconds later, you can hit refresh and you will get uh, a new version of what your specification looks like with whatever it is that you last changed. It does do validation, so it will check to make sure that all of your resources are valid, uh, both against the base specification as well as against any profiles that you've declared. Uh, it will also check to make sure that you don't have broken hyperlinks, because we occasionally do that when we're authoring things. Uh, and it will package up all of the different resources uh, that have been generated uh, and sort of put into canonical form. So, I mean, you might be authoring uh, and capturing your source in XML, but it'll generate the JSON versions of it and the RDF versions of it, so all of it's available uh, for anybody who's wanting to use your implementation guide, and it will automatically update all of the snapshots uh, inside your structure definitions, that sort of thing. In terms of where to find it, if you go to the FHIR uh, website 
and you click on the downloads section, which is something that you will be very familiar, familiar with as developers, either already are or soon will be. From there, scroll down a little bit, uh, and underneath implementation tools, you will find the IG publisher, uh, and you will also find a link to the documentation. You will probably want that documentation because it's a pretty complicated beast. Uh, the other alternative that you can do uh, is go to HL7's um, GitHub repository, and you will see a whole bunch of implementation guides that we've already developed and see how we organize the source, see where we put files, and download it, replace our stuff with your stuff, and just run from that. And then you don't have to understand nearly as much about how to create templates and all of that kind of stuff, or at least it gives you a starting point. I'm going to give you a quick tour of uh, the uh, IG Publisher. I pointed you here at a sample project called the IG Framework. That's actually a little bit out of date and is soon going to get replaced. Uh, we're doing some work uh, in the next month to take a couple of different approaches that we've been using uh, with this tool to produce implementation guides in HL7 and trying to consolidate on one because, hey, we're a standards organization and standardization is a good thing. Uh, but, uh, look there for the updated version uh, once that is complete. So I'm now going to switch modes and that's going to work seamlessly because demonstrations always work seamlessly. Always. Uh, and like that. So I can see the same thing that you're seeing and I don't have to crank my head. And yeah, that's as small as I thought it was going to be. That's unfortunate. Okay. Um, let's try one more thing. And... Changed my resolution. No, it didn't change my resolution. Let's make things even smaller. Slightly more navigable, but not a lot. Oh well. Um, hope are people able to read any of that, more or less? Or? All right. So this is the source directory uh, for a uh, genomics project. Uh, it's an implementation guide that was published uh, most recently, actually for the first time, uh, in the May ballot. And there's essentially two main directories uh, that you need to worry about uh, that are actually checked in to Git. Uh, one is a source folder and one is a framework folder. Source folder is the one that you'll play in the most. And in the source folder, uh, we've got a bunch of resources. So in my case, I'm maintaining my uh, profiles in spreadsheets uh, because in terms of the people that I'm working with and in terms of what we're trying to do, uh, some of the tooling that's available didn't, doesn't work in R4 and we needed to be creating content that was for R4. Uh, and at the same time, writing uh, structure definitions in raw XML is not something uh, I could count on some of the people doing. I do that on occasion myself, but spreadsheets was a little bit more straightforward. And we can go and take a look at um, one of the spreadsheets, spreadsheet mechanism for maintaining implementation guides, we hope to go away eventually, um, but we have to get some of our tooling so that it always supports current version of Fire uh, and um, support some of the edge cases. But this is a simple profile uh, that says if we're doing, capturing observation impact, we've got a couple of extensions. Um, We've also uh, got a slice on derived from uh, that's going to look a particular way. We are going to say that you must support comments and then we've got a couple of observation components and all of that's maintained in relatively understandable spreadsheet form, although if you don't know what a profile is and haven't been taking those tutorials, this is gonna look a little bit weird to you. But there should be some people in your organization who know how to produce these if you're creating profiles. 
Um, other people might uh, maintain the content in Forge or Trifolia, uh, and you'll see Trifolia shortly. In addition to that, we have standalone page content. So I've got a home page, uh, which is index.html, and this is it in Spy, and this is it in Spy looking kind of pretty, although not super pretty. Uh, plain XHTML, and I can have as much XHTML content in here as I want. I've got content that provides background on genomics. I've got content that deals with pharmacogenomics and all the different areas that are important in my implementation guide, where it's just hand wavy text telling people what this content is or how it's supposed to work. Uh, I've got a simple includes folder that says, what do I want my main menu to look like? So I want a home page and a table of contents and an artifact index uh, and a hard link to a history that's shared across all versions of my implementation guide and a pointer back to the fire spec. Uh, and I've got a folder with images and various uh, things like that, plus some example instances. And because this is a demo, I went and ran it uh, 20 minutes ago because the internet here is not necessarily friendly and the IG publication process actually goes and hits terminology servers to look up display names and if the terminology server is down, it will still run, but it runs slower than molasses in January as it keeps waiting in hopes that maybe it will respond for every single code that it looks up and we didn't have time for that. Um, so. As you can see, not a super pretty user interface. There is a slightly pretty user interface if you're running it continuously. But it kicks off, it goes and grabs uh, the validation pack for whatever version of Fire your implementation guide claims to be genning against. Uh, it connects to a terminology server, loads all the content, starts running through all the different resources that are in your source folders. Uh, once it's done that, uh, it creates narratives for any that don't have some, checks to make sure that they're all valid, and mine, of course, are, because I do, ev do everything perfectly, and because I've iterated through this cycle 50 or 100 times making them all valid. Uh, finally, it spits out the output uh, and uh, generates fragments and builds my website, which it then spits out here. And if I launch my index, whoops. I get a pretty implementation guide with the same content that you saw earlier, but with nicer styles. The table of contents uh, that I had indicated that I wanted is there. I can click on that uh, table of contents and see all the different static pages I have. I've chosen to have my artifacts listed here. I can also see a different view of those with categorized lists of the different profiles and extensions and example instances, et cetera. And all of that just flows out. And if we go take a look at a particular profile, you'll see that this particular design of the implementation guide looks very much uh, like the HL7 main website. But I have a different implementation guide uh, that is for a customer who chose basically the customer has a sense of style, and uh, they didn't think HL7 style was good enough for them, and seeing what they came up with, um, I can't really argue with them. This is their implementation guide, gen using exactly the same tooling suite, um, but in this case, um, different style sheets, uh, different uh, menu structure, uh, and different choices in terms of widgets. So this is in fact a widget that they uh, asked for uh, to be built for them because they wanted a specific view that showed only the must support elements in their implementation guide and showed everything that was relevant all in one view. Uh, and so we put together a widget that did that for them. There's still the same sorts of widgets that uh, we have elsewhere, uh, but uh, this is all their stuff and a bit more JavaScript in it uh, than is in the HL7 site because we can't necessarily depend on what browsers people are using in the same way that they could. So that was a super rapid uh, overview of what the IG publisher looks like. Um, 
And if you have more questions or you're running through the exercises and have questions, feel free to uh, come bug me. Great. All right. Oh, I, I want to just one You want that? Oh, um, oh you, you're going to run off the mic? Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Be aware that my trackpad is disabled, so you have to use a little nubby thing in the middle. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll just go ahead and use it then. Okay. And we can actually change the resolution back to normal. And you, you want, oh, you want the, it's in Dropbox? Yep. All right. Just going to extend that so that you can then have your own. All right. Um, so next up, we will go to Dropbox. All right, here we go. Um, so basically, Trifolia is a tool um, that my company put together. It was originally created for creating. Ah, yes, there, much better. So when Fire came out, we um, decided to add Fire support as, as well. Um, turned out it was actually fairly easy because uh, Trifolia, at its heart, really isn't a CDA uh, profiler. It's a um, XML schema profiler. So anything that has a schema, uh, we can easily customize Trifolia to do that. And then, you know, of course, not everything with Fire is, uh, I'll just hold this here, is actually exposed in the schemas, so we have to add some custom layering on top of it. Um, but in the end, it wasn't that difficult to get Fire up and running with it. Um, it is a web-based tool, so uh, you don't need to download or install anything. Um, uh, so you can also run it on uh, iOS and uh, you know uh, Linux if you like. Um, <coughs> the, it is open source, so it's Apache 2.0. So if you want to download and install your own copy of it, you can. Most people just use the, the web version that we host, uh, though. Um, it does work as a registry as well as a, um, a, a profiling tool, an implementation guide creation tool. Um, so any, uh, anything that's imported in a trifolio, you can search through as well. And like I said, it's uh, open source. So um, uh, w one good thing about Trifoli is it uh, does support multiple versions of Fire in one single interface. So um, you don't need to download separate uh, tools or, or go to separate endpoints even for you know, if you want to do DSTU2 or STU3 or, or the current build, uh, you can do all those uh, in one interface. Um, <coughs> it's also got integrations with uh, the Vice Authority Center or VSAC, and I'll talk about its value set support a little bit later. Um, it exports in a variety of formats, but probably the most useful one is the Fire uh, is a Fire Implementation Guide Publisher package as a zip. So in other words, you can export an IG out of Trifoli, you get a zip file, you extract that, and then you can run the IG publisher that Lloyd just, just uh, uh, demonstrated right from there. It does have a Fire API, which I'll talk about, and an uh, uh, integrated implementation guide editor. Um, so currently, we support uh, uh, three versions of Fire out of the box, so DSTU2, SDU3, and uh, which right now is, uh, you know, calling the, the current build or the latest build. Um, that will become Fire R4, obviously, when R4 is uh, published. And then the latest build will be whatever the next thing is. Um, so basically, uh, um, uh, each uh, a version of Fire does have its own API endpoint, though. So there's a um, uh, uh, workflow basically is described in the help documentation. There's a tutorial uh, that uh, actually is listed as one of the exercises for later that, that walks you through how to create a Fire implementation guide, how to profile Fire resources and such. Um, but basically, you create an implementation guide based on uh, what version of Fire you're using. Uh, you add profiles to the implementation guide, so you would select something like you know, you know, uh, observation resource or condition or composition, and then you begin profiling that. Um, you link it to the implementation guide, and then you can export the whole thing as a Fire IG Publisher package. So the uh, profile editor basically looks like this. I know it's a little bit hard to read here, but uh, oh, oh, that trackpad is disabled then, so I'll, I'll, I'll walk around. 
<laughs> and do the do the finger pointy thing. Um, so basically, what you'll have here are, are, are the kind of, probably the most common features you do with profiling, which is changing cardinality, making things that are optional required or repeatable, maybe uh, reduce you know limiting them to a single uh, value. <coughs> you can bind to value sets or uh, you know put in you know s single value bindings to codes as we call them. Uh, you can do slicing uh, here, so on things like sections, we'll create separate slices on those. Um, so basically all the basic uh, uh, functions that most analysts will need. Um, we have uh, an integrated value set editor inside Trifolia um, for doing simple value sets that are uh, enumerated, in other words, just a list of codes. We don't do any of the complex stuff like setting up a, a definition that, you know, take everything below code X in SNOMED. Um, but, you know, so it is, you do need to specify all the codes that are in there. But it does support importing value sets from other systems. The current integration that we have is uh, with VSAC, the Value Set Authority Center, and FinVADS. So if anybody's created value sets in there, you can just point to them and it will pull them in. And you can use those value sets then in either CDA implementation guides or in FIRE implementation guides. Um, <coughs> it also exports value sets in a variety of format formats, the key one being uh, the FIRE value set resource itself. That's probably what most folks uh, here are interested in, but you can also export them in uh, Microsoft Excel. We have our own native XML format and IHE's uh, X, uh, SVS uh, format. There's also a, 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 a API to Trifolio where you can imp uh, import and integrate with anything that has uh, SVS as well. Um, so for exports, when you take a FIRE implementation guide, you can export it probably, probably again, the most important one is the FIRE IG Publisher package. Uh, you can also export all the conformance resources, like structure definitions, value sets and such, as a FIRE bundle. Um, we felt that would be a useful way to exchange implementation guides uh, across different systems, but so far we're the only one who supports that to my knowledge. Um, so maybe it won't be so important now that we've got a package uh, that we're creating. Um, you can also export as uh, MS Word or HTML if you like. Um, the I API endpoints are, are listed here. Again, we've got separate ones for DSTU2, STU3, and the current build. Um, <coughs> we support read and write on structure definition, value set, and implementation guide resources, and we're read only on the you know, metadata and capability statements for obvious reasons. And now there are some limitations. Um, since again, this started its life as a CDA implementation guide uh, uh, editor, there are some uh, features that maybe are not common across both those that we don't currently support. Um, <coughs> uh, some examples are things like reslicing and such. Anybody actually uh, use reslicing? How many people actually know what it is, aside from Lloyd? <laughs> Couple, yeah. All right, so uh, I don't think you're missing out on too much there. Sorry, Lloyd. <laughs> um, uh, currently, we're not integrated with the HL7 Fire Registry, you know, the uh, simplifier tool, um, but we hope to talk to the uh, Firely folks and get that working. Um, <coughs> we do note that the uh, current build of Fire is constantly changing, and updating the, the schema for that is a manual process, so I have to knock on Sean McElvain and my lead developer's shoulder about uh, every month and say, hey, you know, update the, the schemas for the current build. Um, but then that happens pretty, pretty seamlessly. Um, at some point, we'll actually make that a continuous integration, so every time the build is updated, uh, so we're tr we'll try fully, but currently it is a manual process. And lastly, the Fire Implementation Guide publisher itself changes often, and uh, basically it seems like every time that we come to ballot, we have to make changes to Trifolia to make sure the IG publisher package actually works correctly, and now that we've got some major changes uh, that Graham's making right now, we'll be doing that uh, again shortly. Um, so basically, that, that's about it. Um, uh, you can access Trifolia up there. Uh, for the interest of time, I think I'll, I'll spare the, the live walkthrough here, and if folks have questions later, I can show it to you. Thank you. So <clears throat> I think we're running a bit out of time, so I'll try to keep it very brief. Uh, the next uh, IG2 is the one of Simplifier. Um, Simplifier is a, a fire registry where um, you can post and upload all your fire resources. Uh, you can see it as a kind of a very specialized uh, fire repository. 
Um, well, the goal, of, the main goal of Simplifier is enhancing inter interoperability by um, having ex having one entry to all uh, made profiles uh, or fire resources, and so nobody has to reinvent the wheel again, and people can reuse other uh, other work. Uh, another goal of Simplifier is to provide uh, all the help uh, around managing your fire project. And for that, we have a lot of additional features and free features, but we have uh, uh, professional plans that uh, contain additional features, and one of them is the implementation guide editor. Um, beside those features, we also have a, you can download a couple of tools from Simplifier. One of them is Forge, uh, another you can Ford, uh, Ponk, you can download from Simplifier, and we also just released a, a command line tool called Torinox. But for now, we're gonna focus on the IG editor. And I will briefly mention a couple of features. So it's a, a web-based editor uh, based on Markdown. Um, and within this editor, you can include all the resources uh, that are on Simplifier with a simple statements like render, and then you say the project name, followed by the URL key of the resource on Simplifier. Um, and we have an IntelliSense that helps you pick those uh, resources. Uh, currently, we have two different formats, which I will show you later. Um, we uh, have project members, so you can work with more people on one IG uh, at the same time. All the pages of the implementation guide have a, a, an own history, and you can view all the, where every change is logged, and you can see the, the differences, differences between those pages. Uh, you can add your own CSS to it, um, it's also possible to use GitHub, the GitHub integration, and you can edit uh, your uh, implementation guide pages uh, with a Git repository, like with GitHub, and then all your changes are instantly uh, synchronized with Simplifier uh, through next to the IG. And it is possible to uh, export the IG into static HTML pages and host them somewhere else, um, or export them to an implementation guide resource. So let's have a look at the implementation guide editor which we see over here. And actually, our profiling academy on Simplifier, where we put all our best practices on profiling, is also made with our own implementation guide editor. So what you see is, is the editor itself. On the left side, you can create the structure of the IG. In the middle, you have the actual uh, editor, where you put in your text and uh, your statements. And on the right side, you see a, a preview. Um, and here, I think this one that's being rendered is a it's hardly readable, so it's one of the placeholders I just showed. Um, if you click on preview or you watch the, the guide itself, uh, this is in the end the result. So this is one of uh, the pages you can see on the Profiling Academy. So what I wanted to do now is I want to show you uh, one publicly available uh, implementation guide to get a bit of feeling. Uh, and I think because of time I will skip the, the Profiling Academy and uh, after that, uh, I will give a very short demo on how to use the implementation guide itself. So let's have a look at an um, implementation guide by Canada, which is out there. Oh, it's stupid. Let's duplicate my screen. One sec. Changes. So what we see here is the eHealth Ontario implementation guide for the provincial primary care. Uh, well, let's just go to where they list their profiles uh, to have a look at how they do that. So they have their own project on Simplifier where they have all their resources in it and then they make an implementation guide as a wrapper for everything and they reference to uh, the profiles in their project. So here, if you scroll down, you can see uh, their profiles, and this is just one placeholder which renders it to did. So uh, let me show you the implementation guide editor. So I got a, a GitHub repository with a couple of profiles in it and already some text, and these are also for the exercises which can be used to create uh, your own implementation guide with one of these tools. Um, so what I've done, um, I created a project on Simplifier, and I uh, connected my GitHub repository, and it synchronizes all the resources in it. So these are the same resources that are in the GitHub repository. If I check in it, I can see that I have three uh, profiles in it. 
So then I will go to the guide step and create an implementation guide. So for now, we just call it a, you know, our lab results example IG. It's publicly, publicly visible. And then we enter the, or not yet, if I press on enter, edit, then we enter the, the editor uh, from Simplifier. So it's at the moment very uh, empty. So let's add some structure, which we call use case. Make a section about the technical uh, guidance. I want to list my profiles as well. Uh, let's make it profiles. Add some sub pages for it. So I have a diagnostic report. And I will add an observation. And let's, for one thing, like last, we have some value sets, for example. Um, well, here we've got an index. So let's copy some text in it so it feels a bit more uh, realistic. So for example, I already got here my markdown, which is a very easy uh, uh, textual markup for your text. If I press Control Enter, I can instantly see how it is rendered. Um, uh, well, let's preview our guide. And now we see that we have a tree structured implementation guide. Maybe I can zoom in. So this is one of the formats, and if I go to use case, you see our text. But it's also possible to change another uh, format, which we can do over here. And we say we want the two-level menu, uh, which I think now is done. Oh, where's my save? I want to go back, so check. Yeah, we've got our two-level. Check if it works. So now we have uh, the menu on top. Uh, it's also possible to uh, enter uh, a CSS. So I will, for demonstration purposes, I will use the CSS we use for our uh, uh, profiling academy. Just put it in. And again, on the right side, you see your preview. And if I click on preview, now we have a little bit of a better or nicer markup. Um, well, for the last thing we can do um, uh, to demonstrate is to actually uh, include a profile. Um, just to render a profile is one of the statements that are available. You can do a lot of other things. You can show the XML or uh, the, the die next year or show some naming system. So we've got a couple of those uh, placeholders. But to show how to include um, on profile, you would just say render. Then you will suit your profile, which is Def Day's IG arterial. And then, was it the diagnostic report? So you can see that the IntelliSense helps you out with selecting the right profile. Close the placeholder and press Ctrl Enter to let it render. And now we can have a look in our. Uh, how it is online. So let's go to our profile, see a diagnostic report. And you can see that we included a, a differential of a profile. So I hope this demonstrates um, how easy it can be to create an, an implementation guide. Um, and you can try this out for yourself. So uh, on the Dev Days uh, Boston side, we uh, have Follow up a document where you can find the exercises, and they, they, those exercises bring you to the, the GitHub repository I just showed, and then you can try out with uh, just an example content to uh, create a simple dummy IG and play around. And it's also possible to use the um, Simplify IG editor for it. Um, and as part of this whole dev days, we uh, have some vouchers where you can have access to. Uh, a trial account on Simplifier. I think in everyone's uh, program, leave it. We had a little voucher. So if you send your, your account details to uh, Simplifier at Fire.ly, we can all uh, we can give you a three-month trial to try out all the features of Simplifier. 
So um, that was uh, the presentation, the tutorial. Yeah. 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 Uh, Complementary, really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They, they have some overlaps, mm -hmm. but uh, you can use all three of them together. You can author in Trifolia, you can publish in the publisher, you can put your content in the simplifier and the rest of Yeah. And a future wish would be that they will be integrated a bit more so that you can even export the implementation guide and import it somewhere else, but it's a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Oh. Yes, sure. We don't have a mechanism to go from XML or JSON into a spreadsheet. So going from a spreadsheet into one of the others, we actually do that automatically as part of the publishing process. So we generate the others and then drive publishing off of that. Um, so you can go from spreadsheet to the others. You can't go from the others to spreadsheet. So if the uh, end result is a publishing format, the output file, uh, in the future, you would like to have an offering tool that could read Okay. Right. So. Okay. Nice. Yeah.